Like every other major sport, hockey has its core of basic stats. Goals, assists, total points, shots, hits, etc. And when you look at the all-time leaders in these stats, you'll find roughly the same players on top of these categories. You'll find your Gretzkys, your Lemieux, your Borks, and your Brodeurs of hockey's past, while the Crosbys, Ovechkins, and McDavid's dominate the present. In addition to these stats, there are some crazy records that go along with them in a wide variety of different scenarios. However, for this video and series, I'm going to be going off the beaten path and looking at the stats that really nobody pays attention to. I'd like to welcome you all to the all-time leaders in NHL stats that nobody cares about. To start off this series, we're going to be focusing in on a stat that depending on what side of the fence you're on is either extremely important or completely useless. Plus minus. But first, a bit of history, and I'll try to run through this as fast as possible so the hockey fans don't go completely insane. Plus minus is a stat given to every NHL player to, and I quote, represent their skills as a defensive player. Now, depending on the scenario in which a goal was scored, every player on the ice during the time of a goal receives either a plus or a minus to their stat. So for example, an even strength five on five play, when a goal is scored, the goal scoring team all players on the ice will get a plus, and for the goal conceding team, all players on the ice will get a minus. However, things do get a bit more complicated when we move to special teams. If a power play goal is scored, no players on either team will get a plus or a minus. However, if a shorthanded goal is scored on a power play, the goal scoring team will get a plus, and the goal conceding team will get a minus. And as for penalty shots and empty net goals, they do not add either a plus or a minus to the player stat. So aside from the ratio where this stat is affected very little by shorthand handed goals, plus minus shows how often a player is on the ice for a goal for or against in normal play. We'll get to the flaws of the stat in a bit, but how did plus minus actually come about? Well, if you're a Habs fan, then you can thank the 1950s Montreal Canadiens for actually creating it themselves to track their own respective players. More teams would eventually adopt plus minus before it became an officially recorded stat by the NHL in the 1967-1968 season. Now we can't get through talking about plus minus without its fair share of controversy and why many people believe the stat to be downright irrelevant. Hockey is a game of bounces. Some nights every shot you throw on that goes in, and others you'll run into a goalie like a brick wall. You may see nights where superstar players in the NHL go minus three or minus four, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they had a bad defensive game. Maybe they play in front of a not so great defense or a below average goaltender. The stat becomes very inaccurate at times where if you check the current leaders, for example, number one on the list may be a first line winger, while number three is a fourth line grinder. Two players can have the same plus minus, but their overall hockey skills are completely unmatched. There are way too many other factors that contribute to the stat, which is why many feel it is useless to gauge how good a player is. All controversy aside, let's move on to the all-time stats nobody cares about in regards to plus minus. Once again, as a reminder, these stats are only tracking regular season totals, so I left playoffs completely out of it. The player that has had the best plus minus in NHL history is Larry Robinson with a plus 722. Robinson played a total of 20 seasons in the NHL, 17 of them with the Montreal Canadiens from 1972 to 1989. The Hall of Famer won the Cup six times in his career, where he won the Conn Smythe in 77-78, and was a two-time Norris Trophy winner. Robinson was overshadowed in his draft year because the Habs had drafted Guy Lafleur first overall, but after finally cracking the Habs lineup due to injuries, he never looked back and became a mainstay on a dominant blue line in Montreal with the likes of Serge Savard and Guy Lapointe. The worst plus minus currently in NHL history belongs to Bob Stewart with a minus 257. Now the question could be asked if Stewart was a bad player or was just an unfortunate recipient of bad luck. He played nine total seasons in the NHL and was traded twice to two other teams in two separate seasons, 1971 to 72, and 1979 to 1980, his first and his last seasons in the NHL. Aside from playing eight games with the Boston Bruins in 1971-72, the team that would go on to win the cup but left Stewart's name off of it, he had never played for a team that finished with an above 500 record. You really just have to feel for the guy. Next, I decided to look at the plus minus stats for career home and away games. Lyra Robertson holds both those records with a plus 489 in home games and a plus 233 in road games. As for the worst one, the worst home plus minus belongs to 1993 NHL first overall draft pick bust Alexander Daig with a minus 97. 
The worst away plus minus is currently held by Don Lever with a minus 227. Lever was actually a fairly skilled forward whom is most well known for his time in Vancouver throughout the 70s where he had nine total 20 goal seasons. Aside from one or two seasons, Lever got the Bob Stewart treatment where the teams around him weren't very good as he only made the playoffs five times in 15 years. I also took a look at the best and worst single game plus minuses throughout the history of the NHL. The current best is held by defenseman Tom Bladen with a plus 10 as a member of the Philadelphia Flyers against the Cleveland Barons in 1977. He recorded eight points in the game as the Flyers beat the Barons 11 to one. Bladen won two Stanley Cups during his career with Philly during the Broad Street Bullies era. The worst single game plus minus is actually shared between two players, Doug Wilson, current general manager of the San Jose Sharks, and Chris Butler. The San Jose Sharks in 1993 were one of the worst NHL teams of all time, and Doug Wilson can thank them for the minus seven he received in a beatdown by the Calgary Flames, 13 to one. Butler also recorded a minus seven as a member of the Calgary Flames versus the Boston Bruins in 2012 when they lost nine to nothing in Boston. And then finally for the season's best and worst plus minus, Bobby Orr had a plus 124 with the Bruins during the 70-71 season, and Bill Mickelson had a season worst minus 82 for the Washington Capitals in their inaugural season in 1974-75. He only played one game the following year and then retired. I honestly don't blame him. So that'll do it for our look at all-time leaders in NHL stats that nobody cares about, plus minus. So thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe, like the video, and also head down to the comments section and find my comment that's gonna be pinned to this video to discuss your opinions on the plus minus stat. Do you guys think it is that important or do you find it just as irrelevant as most people do? Also, if you guys have a suggestion for a specific stat you guys would like me to focus on for this series, leave that comment down below and make sure you guys like that comment if you do like that idea. Other than that, I'll catch you guys next time. Make sure to go check out the last video that we did focusing in on the last pick of the NHL draft. Other than that, see you guys next time. Peace.